Bertie Kellerman, welcome to Australian Musician. Thank you so much. And Glad. your first Blues Fest, how's it been for you? It's been amazing. We've yeah. been having so much fun. Uh, it's just been great to play and experience the energy of the festival. Also to meet some of my favourite musicians. Yeah. It's been incredible. Yeah. yeah. Uh, growing up in South Africa, um, I mean, most kids pick up a guitar. Uh, yeah. Why the flute? Well, my parents took me to a symphony uh, concert okay. when I was 10 years old and they said, which instrument would you like to play? Yeah. And uh, I liked the idea of using my breath yes. and, um, you know, like in speaking or singing. And yeah. um, my brother chose the clarinet. Okay. So flute was sort of the next in line. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, but I'm really grateful that I chose the flute because it's such a versatile instrument yes. you, know, you can do so many different things with it yeah so it really suited the eventual path that I followed yeah, yeah. did you come through a school system school bands yeah. um, no not school system but, but um, classical the sort of the, all the classical training yeah you know I had very serious teaching many hours a day of practicing yeah. and uh, doing all the grades and stay traveling overseas to study and um, Playing in the symphony orchestras, uh, youth symphony orchestras, yeah. and all all those things, and playing all the flute repertoire, classical repertoire. Yeah. So, I played only classical music for about 30 years. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you, That's quite you, a long time. Yeah. <laughs> do you remember your first professional gig? Um, we we started pretty young. Um, playing in the symphony orchestras. Mm. So we did a lot of gigs, a lot yeah. of concerts with symphony. And yeah. I was the principal uh, flautist of the National Youth Symphony. Okay. Um, and um, so National Symphony Youth Orchestra, and that was amazing. Yeah. You know, we just absolutely loved it. Yeah. And uh, so my, my interest was very much classical, but I did, um, from when I was, when I was very, in my house, there was only classical music played. Yes. But, when my parents went off to work, the lady who looked after me yeah. played only African music. Okay. So I was very much exposed to African music. Yeah. Um, there was no pop music in our house. Yeah. Um, I think the first pop song I heard when I was about 15 or 16, and um, my parents played classical music plus Mediterranean, a bit of Latin American mm. music. Um, so that was my background, yeah. you know. And um, over the years, I've always wanted to do something other than classical yeah. with the flute. Yeah. And um, finally managed to get to it 12 years ago yeah. and started just following my own path. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I saw you perform yesterday, that, that blend of African rhythms and New Ooh. Age music. Uh, how long did it take you to combine those into what you actually do today? Um, well, you know, it's been a sort of an ongoing road because um, as a classical musician, we, we never learned to improvise. Mm. Everything was read. Yeah. And so 12 years ago when I started doing my own thing, that was quite a big hurdle to overcome. Mm. And so I just started with my guitarist at the time, who was also classical. We were both yeah. equally clueless. Okay. And we <laughs> felt very comfortable around each other doing like really stupid things. Yeah. And so we just started playing anything. Mm. No structure, just anything that comes into our minds yeah. and just trying out things and that's how we, and it's, so it's, it's taken, it's been quite a long road to yeah. start combining all those ideas. Yeah. Um, and I suppose when you write new music, all the influences that you've been exposed to over the last 50 years or whatever, sort of somehow comes up and um, they all play a role. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you were recognised for your unique brand of music with a Grammy Award for Winds of Samsara. That's right. Uh, yeah. What did that mean to you? Uh, that was amazing. I think it's near it's any musician's dream. It was my dream to get a Grammy nomination, but it mm. seemed like an impossible dream at the time because as a South African um, born, um, and at that time, you know, I moved to Australia in 2008. Okay. But um, it. It's, it's very hard if you're not based in the U.S. Mm. because, first of all, you have to make the great music, but it, gets, and it goes through unnoticed most of the time. Yes. And the voting community in the U.S., there's, 20, there's more than 20,000 entries every year. Right. They're not going to listen to 20,000 albums. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, you have to get noticed somehow, yeah. and that's actually 50% of the 
of the road and it's really hard. So I was very grateful yeah. when, when we, you know, when we make, made that breakthrough. Yeah. Tell me about your main instrument, um, what it is and when you acquired it. Oh, my, my, the, the flute that I play. Yeah. Uh, I play a gold Nagahara, mm -hmm. which is a Japanese maker, but he lives in Boston. Okay. And um, James Galway also plays a Nagahara. And um, I, I have actually every single flute that I ever played, I've never sold one. Right. You know, I, I'm, I, get, I, feel, I, feel in, I fall in love with them and yes. I keep them. But uh, this flute, I just, I was in Las Vegas at the flute convention. I was invited to play at the National Flute Association's okay. convention in the US. And I just walked past the Nangahara table and I, and I had heard that James Goy plays it and it's supposedly the best flute in the world. Yes. And I just tried one, not thinking, no, I didn't have money to buy it or anything. Yeah. And I, once I tried it, I just had to have it. Yeah. So I made a plan. Yeah. <laughs> So, obviously, you have a large collection of flutes then? I do, yeah. I do. And I play the, the normal C flute, but then I've got an alto flute that I use, a uh, Yamaha bronze alto flute, and then a Yamaha bass flute as well, yeah. also bronze. Um, and then I play this little plastic fife, it's like $10. Yeah. Uh, but it makes a beautiful sound. It's a training flute, really, for kids. Yeah. But uh, I think it makes a beautiful sound, so I, I play that, and I use it quite a bit in my compositions. Yeah. And then I play all the uh, Bansuris, the Indian flutes, you know, um, not as well as I'd like to, yeah. but I, I love playing them, yeah. you know, so. Um, do you play other wind instruments as well? No, um, because I found that playing the sax or the clarinet affects my embouchure. Yeah. So I can't get, I can't get that pure sound. Right. Um, I'm sure if I really would work at it, it it's possible to play both, but yeah. um, I did find that it affected my, the purity okay. of my sound. And even though I do a lot of jazzy stuff and a lot of um, funky stuff, mm. and I, I, I do beatboxing on the flute, which yeah. is flute boxing, the basis is still a beautiful, pure purity in the sound that I try mm. and keep, yeah. you know. And so I work at it every day. Yeah. And so I don't want to risk, I, I, yeah. I don't want to do anything that will so put that at like risk. A, a tennis player who can't play squash and vice versa. Yeah, player, so. exactly, yeah. exactly the thing. And I'm sure there are people who can do both, but it does affect, mm. it does affect your ability to play. Yeah. Is the flute a difficult instrument to capture in the studio? It is. I, it took me, when I started recording it, it took me a long time. I, I went to more than 10 different studios for my first album and mm. I didn't, meet, I didn't meet one studio where it could even come close to what I wanted. Mm. So then I went to a, so I, I was asked to play on a movie soundtrack mm. at a studio and the guy captured me perfectly. Yeah. And, but he was busy, his, his yeah. studio was busy for years. Yeah. So I, I wrote and I, uh, I wrote down all his equipment, okay. the whole chain of equipment. Yeah. And my manager was in the U.S. at the time. Yes. I said, bring this and this and this yeah. and this. She went to, and bought everything. Yeah. And then I had a good, and then I, I, yeah. I travel with that equipment often. Yeah. And uh, even in a hotel room or something, I, if you have great equipment, you can still make a, a good recording. Yeah. You're very much into collaboration. Uh, any new collaborations coming up? Yes, we're busy with a beautiful project uh, right now. It's a collaboration with Soweto Gospel Choir and the uh, South Africa's number one symphony orchestra, which is the KwaZulu Natal Symphony Orchestra. So we, we're doing an album called Symphonic Soweto, a tribute to Nelson Mandela. Uh, and um, so we've taken some of the Soweto, Soweto's favorite songs and some of uh, Nelson Mandela's favorite songs arrange it for flute, choir and symphony orchestra with, with some amazing guests playing. Uh, Angelique Kijo is singing on the album. Uh, Ghana's only Grammy nominee ever is Rocky Dawuni. He's a, a reggae singer. He's doing a song. Um, and, um, and we've got some, we've also taken some struggle music from the apartheid era, era and we've taken, we've written some newly written music and so that's going to be a beautiful project and it's, we'll release it in July of this year, but next year is Nelson Mandela's centenary of his birth. Right. So it's all aimed to celebrate his life. <laughs>
sounds exciting. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's driving me crazy. Yeah. Because um, actually we're recording the symphony orchestra on Wednesday. And I'm le only leaving here on Monday. Yeah. So, um, and you're based in Melbourne now? I'm based in Melbourne, but I, I spend quite a bit of time in, uh, in South Africa and yes. also traveling the US. Yeah. Um, and other uh, all across the world. So I spend maybe four to six months of the year yeah. in Melbourne. Yeah. And it, Melbourne has sort of become my working haven. Okay. Often when I'm back in Melbourne, I don't tell anybody. Yeah. And I just work because, you know, traveling everywhere um, sort of distracts you from actually making the music and creating the music. And you have to make time for that. Yeah. So in Melbourne, I just find is such a beautiful um, place full of art mm. and and so I, I find it easy to work in Melbourne yeah so and that's what I've been doing yeah right Vice Kellen it's been a, a pleasure to talk to you and all the best for the future oh, thank you so much thanks for having me yeah. okay thanks <laughs>